So now it's time for me to decide what I want to do and I'm not even still sure. Like, yes, the environment that I'm in is so toxic, so bad, I get mistreated so much. It would be so easy to leave because the way I've been treated by these people. But they like me and I know that I have a lot of power in my position right now. And I know that if I want something to happen, 90% of the time it will happen. So it's a choice between jumping into something new and fresh or sticking it out for another three months. I really have no idea. That's just what this company can do to someone. Hello everyone and welcome to a Spillity video. Today I'm going to be talking about my work experience from Dollar General. Now, that's so weird to say on camera. I have today my little Spillity cup and then also I have water. I put some pineapple flavoring in it because um, I have my electrolytes for today. Let's pop this open and start the inaugural tea starting ceremony. Yes, I worked for the company. I started there back in 2017 and I just quit uh, a few weeks ago. Obviously, a lot happens in two years, so I did write down literally notes so I don't forget a thing. So this video is going to just focus on the timeline. And, um, it does include like some reasons why I left, but not everything. A lot of it was just such a big mess. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, it all headed back, back in 2017 of the summer, I was looking for a part-time job because I was still a student at the community college. I honestly, swear to God, wanted a job where, like, I felt like, okay, I could leave in six months and, like, no one cares about me. That's legitly the thought I had. As I was looking for jobs, uh, I went inside the dollar store one day and I noticed that there was a sign all around the store basically saying, like, we have uh, open interviews on this certain date. I'm like, you know what, why not? Let's try it, like what's the worst thing that can happen? And so it was about a week later and you know, I went in the very back of the building, had an interview with the then manager. Maybe about a week later, I didn't hear anything back. So I thought like, okay, maybe I just didn't get the job. Like, wow, how sad my life is. Like I couldn't get a job at the dollar store. But I called them back and they told me that I did get hired. And I was so excited because it was like literally my very first ever job interview and I was hired right away, so. So they told me I needed to come in the next day and start taking our CBLs, which are basically these really, really, really cringy Dollar General training videos. They are the worst thing ever. So, um, when I first started, I loved my staff so, so, so much. There was 10 of us. There was a manager and the assistant manager, the two leads, two part-time keys, two cashiers, and two stalkers. And I honestly feel like every single Dollar General should be like that. And honestly, that was the people that I love. That's the people that I worked with. And you know, if I wouldn't been for that staff, if I would have started with almost any other staff that I had my time there, I probably wouldn't have lasted two years. And that's the true team. So I don't know if this is something that every Dollar General does, but it seems like every six or so months, uh, the Dollar General district takes all their store managers and, and swaps them around so that every six months, uh, a manager has a new store that they need to take care of and run. And like, it seems like a good idea in theory, but it just made such a big mess because some stores would be up here and then other stores would be down here. The store should have done like this. They should like equalize or what or not. But it made it so like some stores were brought down even further. So the November of 2017 was coming around the corner. I've only worked for the company for about four months. My manager that I loved so much was getting promoted to temporary district manager. Our manager was at the top. She was had one of the best stores in the district. And so there's no surprise why she was promoted. The uh, assistant manager was able to maintain the store pretty well. So they were working on the shift around. We didn't get our manager until um, about January of the next year. A manager that did run a different store. It was such a trash store. And so he came to our store and he started like messing it up. Like our truck started getting backed up and it was not good. 
He, everyone didn't really like him. I mean, I didn't really have a problem with him. When the show started declining, and he was only there for three months. Then he left in March of 2018. Um, and then we got my third manager. The third manager I had is about five months into his position. It's around August, and I am done with community college. But I did miss the deadline to apply for state school, and I have to wait a whole other year before I could apply again. Which, it sucked a lot, but... On the flip side, I'm like, you know what? I've been going to school for 15 years straight. You know, it'd be really nice to take one year off and work and, you know, make some coin, be like a nice refresher, and then I'll be ready to like hit the books again. But a problem with that is that in order for me to be full-time, I would have to be a key holder. And I asked to be a key holder position, but I was denied to be a key holder. Now, Dollar General does not trust their freaking employees at all. If I wanna like void an item off, I have to go get a key holder. If I wanna make a price adjustment, I have to go get a key holder, which like I can understand. So you are very restrictive of what you could, could and could not do. And as a bonus, I had to work freaking night and I hated working night. It's because with the way the schedule was laid out or whatnot, that I couldn't be working morning, that because I wasn't a key holder, I couldn't open the store by myself. So about, you know, a month later in September, um, someone was leaving the store. They got a new job, so good for them. That basically opened up a part-time key holder position for me. And they said, you know, like, we have a position available and we can offer it to you. You get more hours, you know, and this way, um, whenever you're ready to become a full-time lead, which is one step above the key holder, then it'll be an easy transition. Uh, and I'm like, that's great. You know, that sounds perfect because... Um, a, I need full-time hours. B, I won't have to call anyone up anytime I need a freaking uh, void or anything like that. And C, I can get my mornings back. Another reason why I wanted to become the lead key holder was solely because of the benefits. Because I wasn't going to school, I wouldn't be eligible for my dad's um, insurance anymore and I have to get my own. Well, Dollar General provides its own um, insurance for the people that are full-time. So I decided, you know what, like, that sounds perfect, like it, like it works out, you know. So between the months of September and November, that's when I was being trained to be a key holder. So come November of 2018, no retail place is gonna have the exact same staff within six months, let alone a year. We had about four out of the 10 original people still from a year ago. We had one stalker, we had one lady that had been there for about 26 years, me, so we were the ones that stayed. Some of some of the most important people, one of them, uh, he transferred over to our first boss's store. Like he ended up working better for her than what he did with other people, and everyone knew that. So they decided like let him transfer over to her store so like he can help her fix it up. And then my assistant manager, someone that I loved so much, uh, was actually kind of forced and I do feel bad here I do feel like I was part of it but she was forced basically being promoted to a manager of a different store granted she only lasted two days before she quit and walked out that's just what this company can do to someone so November 2018 um, in the middle of it it's just a transition between getting my third boss out and my very last boss coming in so this clearly means that I am the one that has the most knowledge about the store because everyone else has left. Now, to be honest, when she first got there, I could see in her eyes that she actually did want to do something really good for the store. I just saw this fire in her eyes. So my new boss is coming, talking to me, and she asked me a bunch of questions. I'm trying to answer her as best as I can. Um, the, our store was such a hot mess. We had one key to the public restroom. We had no keys to the office. We had no keys to our bathroom. We had to break into the office in our bathroom with a freaking knife. Uh, the safe codes needed to be updated. They haven't been changed for a year. So, you know, in the beginning, it seemed all great. It seemed like fabulous. She was getting all these things fixed up. She's like, okay, I'm gonna go to the Home Depot. I'm gonna get make keys. I'm gonna call the safe company, get the safe codes changed. Like, all this stuff that should have been done. She said, I'm sorry, it's been like this. Like, it should not be like this. I'm so sorry. In the middle of this, um, I noticed that the assistant manager and the manager were really close during these, like, first few weeks. Um, and they actually basically teamed up to get 
two people basically fired. One was transferred to a different store. The other one is more interesting because uh, basically they called the manager <laughs> which at the time she probably wasn't that much of a <laughs> but the assistant manager then told the manager and then the manager fired that person. But he tried to go out with flames because he then told me that the assistant manager was trying to get me fired. But I really didn't believe that because me and her were starting to become very close. And, you know, I basically kind of brought up to her. I'm like, hey, he just said, you know, like, he try you're trying to get me fired. And we both kind of, like, laughed it off because it, like, it ended up not being true. She, like, showed me, like, I never said anything to this kid. Like, he doesn't know. Like, we worked together a few times. So, basically, that made me and the assistant manager, like, close. One day... Time to introduce the seven day workflow. Now listen, I have my own problem with the seven day workflow, but this is not the video that I'm gonna discuss my problems with. All you need to know is this, is that basically the seven day workflow says you have to get your entire friggin' truck out done within three days. And that the rest of the four days should be done recovering. And listen, I do know that a store should be nice and kept up, should be clean for the customers and whatnot. But I honestly don't think that you need four straight days of recovery, three days doing the freaking truck. The way our truck day landed, our second day to work on truck was the day that we were supposed to do ad. So we couldn't work on the truck because we were busy doing the ad. So whenever, the third day was over or whatnot, we wouldn't be able to work on totes again until the day before truck day. So one time, uh, I was working the night before truck and I had to get rid of 28 totes to work on them basically. But it was a busy night and it was a Friday night and I was only able to get 10 done because it was just a busy day. And I came in the next day and there was a nasty note written and it said the way the shore looked this morning is totally unacceptable. There's no way that these totes should be in the back. This is not okay, basically. Um, and that was a note written by my slip manager. And I felt so heartbroken because I didn't feel like she would do that to me. Basically, I was just kind of in a moody way. And I basically told her, like, I don't want these keys anymore. I, I don't feel like I'm good enough. And I was basically giving my keys over to my assistant manager. But she convinced me, she convinced me to keep them. And then she told me that she's sorry. She started crying too. She said that she didn't want to write that note. That basically the manager made her write that note. And she showed me her text messages. And yes, it's true that the manager made her go around the store, take pictures. And then, so then the manager made my assistant manager write down a note and stick it to the front. So I would see it once I came in. So I thought like, oh, ew, like that's kind of like gross. Like why would she make her say something to me? Like why couldn't she say it to me directly? So now I'm probably gonna include recorded audio of a conversation that me and my manager had uh, the day after this note happened when I threatened to give up my keys. Now listen, I know her, she's gonna try to clock you like, to, that's illegal. People might say that in the comments, but listen. Iowa law states right here ding, that as long as one person in the conversation knows that the conversation is being recorded, then it can be used. So, hmm. So, I'm gonna put a voice filter over her, and here's the conversation. position in this store or in this company except for like district manager obviously because it's too much drama for me I've done everything I've worked with 200 different employees throughout my career okay you can do this and you can do it right with and I promise you we will show you we will guide you I kind of came up with a new plan um, I think that maybe there's some masculinity issues, maybe a little bit, but like, 
with who? Well, like, when you work with I think he tries to run the show maybe a little bit more than he should. And he does things to distract you from doing the stuff that you need to do. You know what I mean? Do you kind of see what I'm following? No. Okay, so like, um, it seems that when you work with people, you get less stuff done. And I cried about your little uh, recovery this morning. I came in. It was a rough morning, but uh, it seems like productivity is less here. You know, I think that needs a strong personality needs to be with because he tries to distract people. I'm going to do something that we're not supposed to do, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to split the store up, okay? I'm going to take a little map, and it might not be exactly like our store. It's going to be the one out of the magbook, but I'm going to split the store up. And how we're going to do it is each night, you for you only, because you had never had to really do the recovery thing. Who knows what she's supposed to do? I'm going to give you certain sections, quads is what they're called, to recover each night. You'll have to wait a minute. And for those quads that once each quad is recovered or you recover this quad in the next night or whenever you work, you work the next quad, this quad will only take you 45 seconds for a four four. I'm telling you, I can do it. I can show you and I know you can do it. I have faith in you. And you are phenomenal. And you have this. Don't let this these, these people get you down. Because I live here crying all the time. I do. I don't want to come to work. You know what I mean? I get it. But I know you got it. And I'll be right here behind you to make sure you succeed. Because one day, you'll be in my shoes. Because you have that great of a personality. And it's worth the money. I'm just telling you. Okay? So... Please bear with me. I'm going to guide you. Don't let these people get you down. It's a rough neighborhood. I didn't realize it was this bad over here. We're finding less stolen packages, so we're getting somewhere, right? I mean, isn't it true? There's less stolen items. I mean, we're getting, we'll get it. I promise. And then it'll be, once it's there, you'll be like, whew, it's amazing. Less work, easier to get stuff done. You know what I mean? Cleaner. It's it's gross. I get it. I'm trying. But sometimes you gotta smack me in my head and tell me focus. Okay? Focus. I need that too. I need the smack in the hand and focus. And I do appreciate you. And you do phenomenal. I just don't think you were guided the way you should have been. Okay? Will you try? I, I even wrote a survey for you to take. I don't, I don't want the kids to like harm me because like yesterday it was so hard not to just walk out and not come back. I can tell you some of the times, you now like when I talk to you compared to when to you. Sometimes she's a little aggressive. A little more aggressive. That's my job when it comes to it. That's my job. That's not your job. You know what I mean? Tell her stop. Just tell her stop. Because she's trying to run the stuff that she shouldn't be running. Recovery. I'm going to get y'all back. You might keep saying I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to bring them home. We will get there. I promise you. Whether, no matter what. And if she's being aggressive to you or talking to you aggressively, say, hey, it's a little too aggressive for me. Tell her. Call her out. I do it all the time. Joey, do not. She's, that's why she's stuck with me is because I have more of an aggressive personality than she does. And I don't like to do that because you don't appreciate it. And you know what I mean? Tell her. And I know, I, I can only imagine how her tone and how she was to you yesterday. It wasn't even that, it's just like, 
don't know, just sometimes I feel like I get praised for things like that shouldn't be praising. And not like in a bad way of like recovery. Um, I tried my best and I thought maybe it looked a little bit sloppy, but then you said it looked great. And then I try to do as many poses as I try to. Yes. And I get. I think that the team's not working together like they should be. And like in my survey, I think we need a team slogan because we're family, we're a team. The same store, the same, this is team. We are a team, we will work together. I will get there, I promise. And it'll be so much easier than you ever have thought. Jesus Christ Almighty. I promise. Bear with me. I'm not leaving till here. We're gonna work it out, and you're gonna be sick and tired of seeing my damn face here. And you're gonna be like, "Get the fuck out." I promise. And within the next couple of weeks, I gotta get on the So this is January of 2019, the start of a new year. You know, I was starting to become distant to my manager because of what she made my assistant manager do. But one day. I was walking back from the back and one of the employees stopped me and was like, hey, listen, um, I just want to talk to you. I really don't want you to get dragged down by the assistant manager. Uh, she basically said that I've worked with her a few times and I've seen how she can become toxic and she can talk to people in a certain way and like, just be careful of her. And honestly, that kind of broke my heart because she, she kind of always complained about something, either if it wasn't like a person that she worked with that night or like how the manager was treating her. She just didn't feel good. And I would always be there kind of comforting her, basically saying like, oh no, I'm sorry, honey. Like, I understand. Like, I know that sucks, you know, basically kind of comforting her. So when my um, coworker told me this, I'm like, okay, maybe I am maybe getting a little too close to her. Maybe I should start distancing myself away from her. And then literally five seconds later, I walked to, up to the very front and then my manager was like, hi, Joseph, did so-and-so tell you what they had to talk to you about? They had to talk to you about something really important. And I said, was it about the assistant manager? She said, maybe. I'm like, yeah, she did. That basically showed to me that she was trying to manipulate all of us. And it made, like, it clicked in my head because I noticed, I went back to every conversation I had with her. She would never be mad at you for doing anything. But somehow, someone else would always be mad at you. So, like, if she was mad at you about this mess in the corner, she would never say, hey, Joseph, pick up this mess. She'd always talk to someone else, like, oh, like, yeah, Joseph made a mess, you know. And then they would say, like, oh, yeah, like, that's not good. Like, that mess, like, that shouldn't be there. And then she would go to me and be like, oh, you know what? So-and-so said that your mess was horrible and that it shouldn't be there and all that stuff. Just very manipulative and just so like ugh. so basically I did become distant from her I stopped talking to her in a friendly way and just started talking about business but like I still respected her obviously and like we just grew slowly apart and with me and my manager growing apart me and my assistant manager started becoming closer because my assistant manager was dealing with a lot of mental health issues um like anxiety and stuff like that and my manager wasn't making it any easier for her was just stressing her out every single day i did feel bad for her so now it's around april and again she's becoming up to her antics it really seems like she was trying to play very hard to get everyone on her side and less on the assistant manager side. I was literally the only person on the assistant manager side. And they would bicker, they would fight all the time. It was just like a very toxic work environment. So while all this is happening, one of my other coworkers says she's thinking about quitting. And I'm like, why? And she said, when she retired, which is back in December, so this is about five months later in about April, and she said that back in December, when she was hired, she was told that she was gonna get more hours guaranteed, but that she just had to earn them. Well, she's been working for the company for five months and she still hasn't earned nothing. Like she hasn't even gotten any more hours besides the 20 hours that she was already working. And you know, I did not want to see her quit. I did not want her to go because I do genuinely feel like she was a good egg. I talked to my manager and basically told her, listen, I'm gonna be going back to school in August. I don't mind me stepping down from my position as lead key holder so she can be lead key holder so she can be up more in position like she'll like be downgraded a little bit 
and that way once I leave it would be a much easier transition for everyone. She kept, are you sure? Are you sure about this? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. It was kind of in the back of her mind whether or not to give this lady a position or not. And then finally the day happened where my assistant manager had enough of the basically and she left. She walked out. Um, and you know what, I didn't blame her because like I said, I was the only one on her side and you know, everyone was against her. Everyone was teaming up against her. And you know, I didn't agree with that. So I don't blame her for leaving. This is the beginning of May and my manager offered me the assistant manager position and I said, no, I said, I am trying to make it an easier transition of me moving away from this company rather than me having a higher position in the company. So then I basically said, um, you know what? I don't want the position, but give it to this other lady. The lady has been working for since, since December. I kind of thrown it out there and she said, oh, I'm not sure she's ready for it. I'm like, what do you mean she's not ready? She's been with the company for five months, okay? Yeah, she might not know everything, but you just have to trust your gut and believe in people sometimes. She was still very hesitant so she didn't fill the position. Also during this time, it seemed to me she was also trying to get someone else fired. Uh, she always asked me questions like, oh, how do you think this person did? Or how do you think this person performed? Or like, oh, so-and-so didn't like get all their totes done. How do you feel about that? You know, basically it's the same thing that they did to my assistant manager. They're doing it to someone else now. And at this point I shut it down. I'm not talking. I'm not saying anything. I'm like, I don't trust you. I know you're just going to go straight to them and tell them everything I say. So I'm not going to say anything to you. Like, sorry. So then more drama happens. My manager comes up to me and is like, Hey, like what type of person do you want to be the assistant manager? She's like, I'm gonna go through all the applications today and pick someone. And I said, whoa, 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 why are you gonna pick someone for the assistant manager position? And she's like, oh, do you want it? I can give it to you right now. I'm like, no, 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 I don't want it. But why are you looking outside of the company for an assistant manager when there is someone that's in the company that wants it? Because listen, if, if it was any Jane Doe or whatever that wanted the position, I would understand. But this freaking woman, she had a degree in management. She freaking ran a family dollar before, okay? So I don't understand why you have someone that's in front of you, someone that has experience, wants to freaking have the position, the one that has the freaking degree for the position, and you're not giving it to her. And I told her straight up, I said that you better be careful because if you bring someone else from the outside, and make them the assistant manager before her, she's gonna get very, 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 very pissed. And she's one of the people that will be like, Bob, I'm out. Like, and she listened to me, and guess what? She was not given the assistant manager position, but she was given my position also. So there was two full-time leads, and I 1,000% take credit for that. Because I, if I did not have that conversation with her, there was no way that other woman would have gotten an assistant manager. And that's the true team. So it's the getting down to the final weeks. And to be honest, I had no idea these were going to be my final weeks, but they were. My manager started telling people that I don't like her. I built a very strong rapport with everyone. Basically meaning that if my manager talked anything about me, I could almost guarantee that everyone would come up to me and talk to me about it. So she was telling people that I didn't like her anymore, that I hated her, which to be frank is the truth, but I didn't show anything against her. Besides me saying I don't want the assistant manager position and I'm leaving for school purposes in August. And I told her that months ago. But all of a sudden now she's telling everyone and their freaking mother about me leaving her. Okay, I don't like her. So I'm like, oh, that's cute. You're doing the same thing to me that you're doing the two people in the beginning uh, when you first got there to the assistant manager, what you try to do to someone else but failed at. And now you're doing it to me. So, um, yeah. I I'm not having any of it, honey. So around the 10th of May, 2019, I checked back on a job that I applied for way back in March. 
and I'm like, hey, listen, I applied for this job back in March, and I was just wondering, you know, I just want to know what's the status of my application. And they told me that my application got lost and they couldn't find it. Come in on that Monday um, and for an interview. So I, you know, hopped in my car, went to the interview. They, had, they only had one position left open. And I'm like, okay, she said that we have interviews for all day and tomorrow, and we'll let you know as soon as possible. I'm like, okay. Uh, two days later, I get a call. I was completely shooketh and shocked that I actually got the damn job because the way they made it sound was not at all that how I was expecting it to go. The only bad thing is I was only given five days notice. I went from my house to the downtown library, typed out my letter of resignation, printed it out, put it in an envelope, and drove to my work. And I gave it to my boss. Taking my flip-flop, I went to home. What? Oh no. Alright. Okay. Uh, what? Are you pregnant? No. Probably just not. This is my letter of resignation. When? Oh, uh, it's been a month. And I'm sorry, I, if I honestly could have given you more time than I did, but I. Why? Um, Why the name to me? Because that's when I start saying. Some of the classes? Huh? Is that when you start what? Something else. What do you start with, Joseph? Um. Is it more money? You know, I, I need to start grateful for the kind of thing here. And, you know, even though I've struggled, I think I've done well, but it comes back. You know, this is probably isn't. How much more money, Joseph? It's honestly the money's not the Joseph! What is today? The uh, 14th. So five days. Oh my god! It really sucked because I was only able to give her five days. But I had to do what's best for me in my life. And the place I was at was very, very, very toxic. And I do not recommend it for anyone. Now, again, this was only my experience. I'm only one employee from like a big company. But you know the boss i had was just very toxic so yeah ash for the tea we drink it all up today a very good story to bring back the spill the tea series I, I do have a lot more videos planned about dollar general um of course i'm not gonna post them all right now but sporadically over the summer or so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please remember to leave a like and i'll talk to you guys all again next time love you like, when she worked, she'd have, like, two or three other people helping her.